World trade with China will be at the top of the agenda, of course, when President Trump arrives in Beijing later on Wednesday. He's called that trade deficit horrible, remember? Uh, China correspondent Tom McKenzie joins us now from just outside the Forbidden City in the Chinese capital. Tom, key areas of focus for, for both President Trump and President Xi. Yeah, Heidi, absolutely. So key, key areas of focus, as you say, will be trade and will be that deficit that Malcolm was just talking about, that more than 300 billion deficit, at least according to the IMF. That's been a bugbear for President Trump, and he's expected to pressure try China to take action to try to move that in the other direction. Of course, North Korea is going to be firmly uh, at the top of the agenda as well for both parties here. And the US are expected to pressure the Chinese to continue to enact the sanctions that have been put in place, to continue to enforce those strictly, possibly also to put in further unilateral steps or take further additional measures to pressure the North Koreans. that on the trade front, they're going to be flagging this import fair that's going to be set up November of next year to encourage more imports into China. They may also try and change the tax regime a little bit for foreign enterprises to make it uh, a bit easier for foreign companies to operate here. From the Chinese perspective, they'll want to see from the US a relaxation of imports or exports of high tech to China. There's been this focus on national security concerns which ticked up under President Trump that's pressured these high-tech exports that China wants to get hold of. They may also try to see if the US will sign on to any document around or supporting or acknowledging China's core interests. So Tibet, Taiwan, the South China Sea. We're expecting President Trump to arrive here in Beijing around 2.45 local time. He's then going to be taken uh, fairly shortly after that arrival to the Forbidden City behind me for a private tour with his wife, the First Lady, and with President Xi and his wife. They then dine in the Forbidden City. The uh, Chinese ambassador to red carpet, a lot of pomp and ceremony. The Chinese will be trying to play to Trump's ego on this visit. We heard from a former U.S. ambassador to China, Gary Locke, just a short while ago, asking him about the sort of deals that might be made. What uh, are we expecting? Some soya beans, Boeing, etc., on the table? Yeah, Rich, that's right. So there's about 40 executives, U.S. executives, who will be accompanying President Trump on this visit. We are expecting a flurry of multi-billion dollar deals. Those are likely to be signed tomorrow afternoon. We've got the state dinner uh, tomorrow evening, and prior to that is the signing ceremony for a number of these deals. As you say, look for sectors, aviation, autos, financial services. We've heard, for example, that G GE... Uh, those are some of these big deals. Goldman Sachs as well, likely to be signing on for a $5 billion uh, investment program with China's sovereign wealth fund for manufacturing, to fund manufacturing in the U.S. We may, on the trade front as well, see China lowering barriers to some sectors, potentially the auto sector, potentially financial services as well. So those are key areas to look for. Well, yes, so big deals are expected, some headline deals tomorrow. In terms of the real structural shift in this trade relationship, though, and the geopolitics, we aren't expecting a key takeaways that he can tweet back to his uh, community back in the U.S., some, some wins for President Trump. But we don't expect to see a big structural shift in the trade relationship.